Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. This week we're going to have a pretty simple video and we're just going to be going over the basics of folders and files within your system. Now it's one thing to manage files and folders inside of After Effects, but a lot of times when you're working on scripts, people will want you to deal with outside files, whether it be a text file, an XML file, or some type of media. So it's important that you use the functionality built into Extend Script to properly access files and folders and get all of the data you need. So today we're just going to be taking a look at creating a basic script that when we run it, it's going to give us a couple of alerts. But basically what it's going to do is create a folder on our desktop called main. And then inside of it, we're going to be generating a text file. And inside of here, we're going to be going over a few things that are universal in working with files and folders inside of After Effects. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and delete the folder that it's created. And we're going to open up a fresh JavaScript file and zoom in a little bit here. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is create a folder. If we look inside of our object model viewer inside of Extend Script, there's a couple ways we can deal with folders. We can use folder.create to create a folder that doesn't exist. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a variable and we're just going to call this the main folder. And this is going to be the folder called main that we had on our desktop. And what we're going to do is set this equal to a new folder. And inside of folder, we're going to have parentheses. And the argument we need to pass through here is the path of our folder. So in this case, we're going to need to pass through a string of our folder, which is going to be on our desktop. And we're going to use two slashes here, because if we just use one, then it's not going to work properly. We use two and then we'll just type in the name of what we want the folder to be. So main, we also need to use the tilde when referencing our desktop because we're not going to be including uh, the drive as well as the username. So now we have main folder is equal to a new folder on our desktop called main. What we want to do now is let's go ahead and check if this exists. So I'm going to grab my system .write line. And if you're not familiar with this function, Anything we put inside of here is kind of like an alert, except it's going to display over in our JavaScript console. If you can't see your JavaScript console inside of Extend Script, just go to Window and click on JavaScript Console. So anything we put inside of this right line is going to tell us what the information is that we need. So inside of here, if I put in main folder dot exists, because if we go down here to our folder, and we have a property bool called exists. When it returns true, this is a folder that currently exists in the file system. If it's not, then we need to actually create the folder. So let's go ahead and run this. You can see we're getting false. So this folder exists, that's false. So below this, what we need to do is create our folder if it doesn't exist. So I'll create an if statement. And the condition for our if statement is going to be our main folder dot exists. And we're going to say if it does not exist. So if we put an exclamation mark in the front, it's telling us that it does not exist. So if this returns true, if it does not exist, which if we write it right here is going to be true. So if it doesn't exist, we want to grab our main folder and we're going to call the method create. And we're going to call the constructor create and if we go down here to our actual list of things you can see we have our create bool right here and then one more thing I want to go ahead and write after we create our main folder is I'm going to bring in another system write line and inside of here I'm going to just say our main folder name is equal to and then I'm going to add in an actual variable from our main folder I'm going to grab our main folder dot name. So now if we run this, we should say that our main folder doesn't exist. That should be true. And since it is true, we want to create our folder. And then we want to see what the name of our folder is. So if we run it, you can see a folder just popped up here on our desktop. And you can see it's empty, but we've now successfully created our folder. And we're also getting our main folder's name in our console. All right, so the next thing we need to create is our text file inside of this folder. To do this, just like our main folder, we'll create a variable for it, and we'll just call it txt file. 
and I'm going to set this equal to a file. And just like a folder, we need to put in a path inside of these bounds here. But let's go ahead and say we don't know the exact path that this is going to be in. Say the user put it in our, their videos folder or their documents. Well, what we can do is reference our main folder itself and do some calculations to get the actual folder name. So if I go ahead and type in for our file, our main folder dot path. And if I go ahead and write on our system line here, our main folder path, you can see it just references our desktop, not the main folder, but since this is the main folder we're referencing, it's just on the desktop. So then if I say our main folder path, which is our desktop, plus um, some slashes, and then plus our main folder dot name, which is going to be main. And now I'm going to do the same thing as I did with my folder. I'm going to basically say if my text file does not exist, then I want to create it. But with the file, it's a little bit different. With the folder, we can just use the create constructor. But with the file, what we need to do is first grab our file, so our text file, and we want to open it in order to write it. W means write, and R means to read. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our text file again, and we're going to write something inside of it. We're just going to say, this is my text file. And then we always need to close our file to make sure that there's no memory leaks or that something messes up. So I'm going to say text file dot close. So now if I go ahead and run it and go inside of our folder here, it appears we don't have anything created yet. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. First off, I'm going to delete some of these so I can know which console log is mine. And the first thing I'm going to do is, and the first thing I'm noticing is we forgot to actually name our text file. So after our main folder dot name, I need to add a forward slash here and then the name of our text file, which I'll just call my text file dot txt. And now I'm also just going to console log all of this and click on play. So now we have our folder here with my text dot txt and it returned true which means it run through properly so if we go inside of our main folder we have our text file and it has a string of text saying this is my text file all right so that's going to be the basic way we can manipulate things i'm going to go ahead and do one more thing that is vital to know when dealing with folders and files and that is to read our file now this is just going to be a simple way to read our file uh, it doesn't apply for all file types and I have other tutorials if you wish to learn about that. So we're going to just create a function called read file. And the one argument we're going to take in here is our file. And then right after we create our text file, we're going to want to read it. So what I'm going to do is call our read file function and pass through our text file. And then inside of our read file function, which we're going to be bringing in our text file into, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab our file and we'll open it and like i said w means to write and r means to read so we're going to be reading our file and if we go into our text file you can see it's only one line of text so this is a very straightforward way to read that one line of text say you just had a bunch of text files for a user and you just needed to read one line of text all we need to do is open up our file and then I'm going to write this into our console and say file.readline. And you can also do file.read if you just go into the object model viewer and go to file and down to our constructors. And you can see down here we have read, read character as well as read line. I'm just going to use read line since we have one line of code here. And then, like usual, we need to grab our file and close it to make sure we don't get any leakage. All right, so now if we run this, the only thing we should see in our console is what our text file says. So if I go ahead and change this to something like that, and we go ahead and run the script, if I go ahead and open it up, I can see it now says, thanks for watching today's video. And inside of our text file, when we read our line, we're getting thanks for watching today's video. 
All right, guys, and speaking of those words that I just said, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a very simple tutorial, but, but sometimes I gotta create short, simple tutorials to make sure that people can learn basic concepts quickly and not be bored by a 40 minute technical tutorial. But again, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button right next to it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, leave a comment if you have any questions or comments. But that's going to do it for this week, you guys. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.